välirauhan aikana Neuvostoliiton ja Saksan valtauspyrkimykset jatkuivat. Neuvostoliitto ei talvisodan jälkeenkään missään vaiheessa luopunut Suomen valtauspyrkimyksistä. Se oli jatkuvasti esissä ja Suomea painostettiin monella tavalla. Suomi oli hyvin, hyvin vaikeassa tilanteessa ja tässä hädänalaisessa tilanteessa Suomi otti vastaan Hitlerin taholta tulleen avun tarjoukset. Tällä tavalla Suomi joutui Saksan rinnalla jatkosotaan. The interim peace was difficult for Finland. The Soviet Union persisted with its desire to occupy Finland. Right after the Winter War in mid-April, Stalin summoned his top generals to a meeting. In this meeting, they discussed lessons learned from the Winter War and proposed improvements for their war-fighting capabilities. In the spring of 1940, Stalin ordered Marshal Timoshenko and General Meretskov to draw up a new plan for invading Finland either in the autumn or winter of 1940-1941. In the spring of 1940, Germany occupied Denmark and Norway. It also defeated the Western powers in continental Europe. As Germany was busy fighting in the West, the Soviet Union seized the moment. It occupied Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Bessarabia and North Bukovina. After this, Finland remained the only unoccupied country in its sphere of interest. Hence, Finland was next in line. In the summer of 1940, the Soviet Union began a very strong domestic and foreign policy campaign against Finland by demanding additional rights on the Petsamo area nickel deposits, transit rights to Hanko, and a new interpretation of the peace treaty. At the same time, it began to concentrate troops along the Finnish border. With the Western powers now out of the game, Germany remained the only state on which Finland could try to rely in its moment of distress. Before attacking Finland, however, the Soviet Union was waiting for Germany to invade England. However, a paradigm shift occurred in German military plans in July 1940. The German military high command regarded an invasion of England too risky and thought Great Britain would be ready to seek peace after the Soviet Union was defeated. Therefore, Hitler initiated the planning of an attack against the Soviet Union. Evidently, this had been on his mind the entire time of the war. It was, perhaps, even his main objective. Finland, unknowingly, had been included in these plans from the very beginning. Finland got wind of the future development of German-Soviet relations early on. When Finland was vying for peace in the end of February 1940, Goering, using Mr. Kivimäki as his envoy, urged the Finnish government to sign a peace treaty. According to him, it would be possible to later regain the lost territory with interest. Later on, during the German-Finnish trade negotiations in the end of June, the Germans hinted about the possibility of waging war against the Soviet Union. In the end of July 1940, the German doctor Weishauer visited Finland with the purpose of finding out how the Finns would react to a possible conflict between Germany and the Soviet Union. During his trip he met, among others, Prime Minister Rutte and Marshal Mannerheim. August to September 1940 was a critical juncture for Finland. In the beginning of August, the Soviet Foreign Minister Molotov 
announced their upcoming territorial ambitions, after which the Soviet Union raised the number of troops along the Finnish border. An attack against Finland was imminent. On the 8th of August, Mannerheim demanded a partial mobilization. The government, however, did not agree to this. Nevertheless, the readiness of the Finnish army was raised. In August 1940, Germany became aware of Finland's critical situation. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Feltjens was dispatched to Finland to propose transit rights for the German troops in the German-occupied northern Norway. In this way, Germany intended to link Finland into its eastern offensive. Now, the Finnish political and military leadership had two options. Finland could either accept Germany's offer or end up fighting the Soviet Union on its own again, poorly equipped and exhausted from the Winter War. Therefore, on the 19th of August, 1940, Finland accepted Germany's proposal. The first German transit troops arrived in Vasa on the 21st of September, and weapon deliveries commenced on the 26th. Hence, Finland became irrevocably tied to close military cooperation with Germany. Even at this stage, Stalin did not give up his ambition to occupy Finland. Therefore, in the autumn of 1940, the Red Army was ordered to plan a large-scale invasion. In November 1940, when Molotov visited Berlin, he reminded Hitler of their spheres of influence and demanded the right to invade Finland. Hitler categorically rejected the demand. Immediately after this, an extended transit pact was signed with Finland, to which the Soviet Union responded by demanding, to no avail, that the German troops leave Finland. For the time being, the Soviet attack against Finland was averted. In the end of 1940, the Finnish and German military commanders got together for the first time. When Hitler signed Operation Barbarossa on the 18th of December 1940, in other words, the attack against the Soviet Union, Finland was factored into the plan. Finland's role was to engage Soviet troops with a pincer attack on both sides of Lake Ladoga and to recapture the Hanko Peninsula. In the beginning of 1941, negotiations regarding concrete military cooperation began. During the spring, the planning advanced to encompass various sectors and collaborative organizations. German troops began to arrive in Finland in the beginning of June. 